Let's take a look at some chapter 4 test review questions. I thought maybe I'd try this, see if this might help you out a little bit, and go through some of these questions that are likely, very likely, to show up on the chapter 4 test. So we'll start up here with some true false. And I believe all of these true false questions are from section 4-1, so the first part there. So question number one. Diminishing marginal utility describes the decreasing satisfaction a consumer receives with the purchase of each additional unit. That is true. Diminishing marginal utility. That does describe decreasing satisfaction. So we talked about this with the uh, continuing drinking the large, continually drinking the large Pepsi or eating slices of pizza. A marginal, as you will recall, meaning one additional unit of something. So that one's true. Number two, a demand curve illustrates the quantity demanded at all possible prices at a given time. Yes, it does. An individual demand curve does describe the quantity demanded at a variety of possible prices at a given time. That one is true. Number three, a demand schedule is created from a demand curve. What do you think? Schedule created from a demand curve. That's false. That's right. That's like a tail wagging the dog here. The demand curve is created from the demand schedule. You'll re you will recall that the schedule is the listing of the quantities demanded and a particular price. So number three is false. Four, the law of demand states that more of a product will be purchased at lower prices than at high prices. Does that make sense? Law of demand, we were going to purchase more when prices are low than when they're high. Yes, we like low prices. That one is true. Let's look at some multiple choice. Question five, this is from section one. For most products and services, increased prices results in demand for fewer products, demand for more products, reduced demand for substitutes, increased demand for complements. Well, what do we think here? You like A? Demand for fewer products? I like A. We'll go with A. Demand for fewer products. An increase, uh, question six, an increase in the price of milk causes a decrease in the demand for cereal. The two products are substitutes, complements, unrelated, demand elastic. An increase in the price of milk. Well, we know that these two things go together, and things that go together are known as, say it, complements. B, complements. They are complements, yes. Question seven. Because a modest price, modest meaning oh, not a lot, small price, small price increase, because a modest price increase has little or no effect, the demand for the product is complementary, inelastic, elastic, super elastic. Well, the best answer here is inelastic is our best answer for question number seven. And we just finished up uh, that question seven there. You know, don't worry about this question seven. Uh, that one, I don't plan on putting that one on the test. There's something about that question I just don't like. Let's move on to eight, nine, and ten. Number eight, a business doubled the price of a product in order to increase profits. Sounds reasonable. Which of the following scenarios might have occurred? Sharp increase in revenue demonstrated the elasticity of the product. A sharp increase, an increase in revenue. So we raised the price, doubled the price, and people bought more, made more money, elasticity. That means they're moving in the same direction. I'm not, uh, no. Elasticity, that's going to move in the opposite direction. B, a small increase in revenue demonstrated the unit elasticity of the product. Small increase, well, it's increasing. I'm not feeling that. I'm looking for the word proportional for unit. C. A dramatic decline in revenues. A big decline in revenues demonstrated the elasticity of the product. Okay, I like the word dramatic, 
and the fact that they doubled the price. Uh, but we have that word here too. A dramatic decline in revenues demonstrated the inelasticity of the product. Oh, well, if it was inelastic, they would have made more money. Uh, let's see, a dramatic, but it says a decline, so that can't be inelastic. See, if it was inelastic, they'd make more money. It wouldn't be a decline in revenues, it'd be an increase. So, C, a dramatic decline in revenues demonstrated the elasticity of the product. Yes, so the people saw that the price doubled, they bought a lot less, and so the business made less revenue because there was less expense on the part of the customers. So the answer C is the best answer there. Number nine. A demand schedule shows. Okay, remember the schedule is the list. Oh, look at that right there. A listing of the various quantities demanded at a particular of a particular product at all prices that might prevail or exist. Another word for prevail, exist in the market. So B is our best uh, answer there on number nine. Number ten, an increase in the price of cameras results in a decrease in the demand for film. Let's update this. How about the price of digital cameras results in a decrease in the demand for memory cards. That makes a little more sense for today's students of 2015-2016. The two products are unrelated. No. Demand elastic makes no sense. Substitutes. No. Once again, these things go together, right? Memory cards, digital cameras, things that go together are known as complements. Number 11. When a customer's need for a product is not urgent, demand tends to be. So, you're not in a hurry. You've got plenty of time. You can look at substitutes. You can look at all kinds of different choices. Therefore, your demand is going to be, yes, elastic. B, elastic. Let's take a look at 13. According to this demand curve, how many movie videos will be demanded at a price of $10? Here's our price. $10. Follow our line over to the demand curve. Look at the quantity demanded. Drop it down. And the answer is 1,000 D. 14. According to this demand curve, if the price of movie videos increases from 14 to $16, from 14 to $16, this section of the curve right here, so the price is going up, the quantity, the quantity demanded will be Will. Oh, I see. Okay, what's going to happen here? So, if we come up from here to here, well, let's analyze here. So, we're at $14. We're at $600. If we increase the price to $16, we're going to be at $400. So, the question is, what happened here? It went from here to here, $600 to $400. So, a change of $200, and, it, and it's decreasing. It's going from $600 to $400. So, let's see what happens. What choices do we have? Fall, rise, fall, rise. It's got to fall from rise, oh here, fall from 600 to 400, 600 down to 400, so the answer then is A. 15, we've got a couple different demand curves, it's moving to the right, so it's increasing, some generic product here, price of the product here. Which of the following choices could cause the movement shown in this graph? So, it's an increase in demand from D1 to D2. It's an increase in demand. What could cause that to happen? A decrease in income. Less income, going to have more demand? I don't think so. More people, an increase in population. That could cause that to happen. That one, that one could work for us. Let's see if we can get rid of these other ones here. A decrease in the price of a substitute. So, the substitute, no. Substitutes move in the same direction, so if it was a decrease, these arrows would be pointing to the left instead of to the right. An increase in the price of a complement. Uh, complements are going to move in opposite directions, so an increase in the price. No, 
because its complement would be decreasing. So the only answer that makes sense is this. More people. Increase in population could increase demand. That could, notice it's could happen. So the answer there, best answer is B. 16. The movement shown in this graph represents, represents a change in what? The movement shown in this graph represents a change in what? So we have two demand curves, D1, D2, pointing to the left. It's a decrease in demand. And remember, it's not a decrease in quantity demanded. Quantity demanded only results as a change in price movement along a single curve. So when a, one curve is, be, is moving, becoming a new curve, that's a change in, let's see, hmm, it's a change in demand, but what could cause that change in demand? A decrease in income. That makes sense. A decrease in income could cause a decrease in demand. Increase in population, no, we just learned from the previous one, that would be moving to the right, not to the left. Increase in the price of a substitute. Here we go again. Okay, so substitutes move in the same direction. So if it was an increase, then it would be an increase in demand. It would be going to the right, so that's not a good answer. D, a decrease in the price of a complement. Complements move in opposite directions. This is telling us a decrease. Therefore, the demand would be increasing, so that one's no good. The best answer is A, decrease in income could cause a demand curve to shift to the left, or a decrease in demand. And let's take a look at one more. The butter and the margarine. Butter and margarine are, are they substitutes or complements? Substitutes, yes. We can substitute one for the other. So we've got the demand for butter here on our x-axis, and it looks like the demand for butter is moving to the left, which is decreasing, and the price of margarine is over here on the y. So the movement in the graph shows that the quantity demanded of butter... De oh, this, this question, I remember going over that. Okay, so this is a typo. And it needs to look like this, that the demand... I did not write that test question. The movement in the graph shows that the demand of butter decreased. Now it makes sense. The movement in the graph shows that the demand of butter decreased because what could happen here? These things are substitutes, and we have learned that substitutes will move in the same direction. So if butter is decreasing, then its substitute will be decreasing as far as its price goes. So let's take a look here. Price of butter increased. Uh, no. No. Uh-uh. Price of margarine increased. No. Price of butter decreased. No. Price of margarine decreased. Yes, this is the one that makes sense. Now, this one here doesn't make sense. You're looking at this and you say, oh, well, the price of butter increased, so the demand for butter would be... Yes, but... It's asking us about substitutes here. It's asking us about the price of margarine on the y-axis versus the demand for butter on the x-axis. So you've got to be careful there. If this were just simply talking about butter, period, then a price of butter increasing, oh, see, but the demand wouldn't change. It would be a change in quantity demand. There's a great trick question. Almost got me. Price of butter decreased would be a change in quantity demanded, not a change in demand. So tricky. They messed up here, but they really did a good job here of trying to trick us, confuse us, really test us whether or not we understand this difference here. Once again, change in quantity demanded is only a result of a change in price along the same demand curve, whereas we're looking at a change in demand, which would be one of these other factors other than price for that product. But the price of a margin, price of a of a substitute, that one is an appropriate answer. So the demand of butter could decrease as a result of the price of margarine decreasing because the lower price of margarine would cause people to go to the margarine and therefore they wouldn't buy the butter. That's it. So I'm going to stop there. That's almost 15 minutes worth. Hope that helps, out, helps you out. Let me know.